Hello everyone, this is Crystal and I'm back with another week in my Project Life album. Uh, I have a bunch of photos for this week, quite a few, way more than are going to fit in this spread. So I'm going to have to do some editing. This, by the way, is week 36, so I'm still trying to catch up. Um, so I'm going to have to go through and figure out which of these I actually want to include on this spread and which I can save for another project. And for supplies, I am using uh, one of the stash kits that I made. So if you missed that video, I will be sure to link it uh, here. Uh, so that you can go check that out and see how I put together this kit. But this is the one that's kind of fall themed. So even though I am working with a spread from the end of August, the beginning of September, so it's not technically fall, there's a lot of fall kind of themed things in this, uh, in my photos for this week. So I thought this one would work well for telling these stories. Um, so that is my plan. Uh, there is the, the kit itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and put you on fast forward and get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is edit through my photos and figure out which ones I actually want to use on this spread. And I thought I'd talk you through my process for that just a little bit. So the first thing that I do is look at what I have and think to myself, is there anywhere else that these are going to be documented. So if it's, um, for instance, that photo of the Citrus Twist Kit design team announcement through the end of the year, um, that's actually gonna end up in my creativity journal, so I'm gonna take that one out. Um, there was um, one of, oh, so Abby's birthday picture is in here. I end up taking that one out as well because I decide to document that separately. Uh, and then of course, if there is a cute photo of an animal, I will probably do a, a layout or a page in my Life Crafted album for one of those. So those I can eliminate, those can go into those other albums. Um, and then I'm also looking at things that kind of help tell the story of this week. So I, I look at my calendar, I look at the notes that I took for this week and think, what are really the main themes? What are the main stories that I wanted to um, get written down for this particular week? And I look for photos that help tell those. So sometimes it's just a random photo of a cat on a, on a cat bed or on a chair, and that really doesn't need to be in this week. That can go somewhere else. But if it's, um, for instance, that photo of the two dogs in the backseat of the truck, well, that helps tell a story of something that happened this particular week. So I definitely wanted to keep that. So that's kind of how I choose what photos to tell. This is where I remembered I had this little stash of supplies pulled aside uh, specifically to document uh, Abby's 15th birthday. So I grabbed that thinking I would just use it in this pocket, but no, I'm gonna take that out. And I instead am going to add back in one of the other photos from this week, which is just a cat in a chair. Um, so it doesn't particularly tell the story of this week, but because I knew I wanted to do more with that other photo, it gave me the opportunity to add this one back in. Okay, so now I have my photos and my cards in place. Uh, I chose that title card and then I kind of based all the rest of the colors around it. Um, so I, I stuck with that kind of sagey green and kind of orangey, um, what's that color, kind of a corally, orangey color um, to, to go with that uh, title card. And then there's also some light blue in that title card. I'll end up bringing that in in embellishments. So I'm going through the embellishments now. I started with this chipboard sheet and I'm just picking out a few that I think will work. Actually, I started with a set of Colorcast Designs house wood veneers that I knew I wanted to use because I have a picture of our... Um, the house that we did own at this time in Noblesville and uh, that was one of the listing photos and I just loved that view of it and this was uh, the week that it sold so I wanted to make sure that I kept one of those photos in there and I thought that that little wood veneer house was perfect for documenting or helping to document that story and you will notice I am not going to be doing a lot of journaling on this page so I am letting the pictures speak for themselves and some days or some weeks that is uh, that's what I prefer to do I don't feel like writing the stories down maybe I am not ready to tell those stories yet maybe um, the stories feel too big to fit into this album and they'll they'll end up being documented elsewhere like the house story definitely has been documented elsewhere um, it just depends on how I'm feeling uh, at the time that I'm documenting and how I'm feeling about the particular week that I'm documenting. So this week, not a lot of journaling, and I'm totally okay with that. So you saw me 
pull out this little container of labels and tags and kind of die cut ephemera. That is actually from the Hustle and Heart kit, which is last December's Citrus Twist kit. And I happen to have had it in with my December documenting dis December documenting supplies, and which I just went through and cleaned out and found that in there. And so I, I had it just sitting out and I pulled it out because I knew that there were the same colors or very similar colors in that kit. And I could use it to kind of pull in some labels and some other pieces to help me, to help me embellish this spread. So uh, especially I was looking for labels to kind of put these little phrase stickers on. So these are some craft uh, colored little phrase or word stickers from Studio Calico from a long time ago that were in this DIY stash kit. And I, I like them. I love the font. I love that it's white on craft. I wanted to use several of them on this spread, but I was trying to figure out how to add them because I didn't really like the look of them just kind of floating on the photos. So I like to ground things on labels. This is something I do all the time. If you've been watching me create for any amount of time, you know that labels are my jam and that is what I use on nearly every project to kind of um, help ground things on, uh, especially like clusters of embellishments. So that's what I went in search of. That's why I grabbed that little container of Hustle and Heart embellishments. And that's what I'm going to use on nearly all of these photos to, um, to help me embellish. So I have that housewood veneer. I have a little puffy sticker. I have that phrase sticker. And then I have a label beneath it all. And that's what I'm going to use on this photo. And that's going to be it. That's going to be my embellishing and journaling all in one um, on this particular photo. So moving on, now I just need to find labels that work with the rest of these embellishments. I have that little chipboard piece on the photo of my feet. This was actually one that I took while I was running that day and kind of saw the first fall leaves. And so I stopped and took a photo of my feet and a couple of the fall leaves on that green background. And I, I had posted it on Instagram, I think saying something like, it's almost here or fall is coming or something like that. Um, and decided to include it here because uh, I felt like it tied in the um, fall theme that I'm using to document this week and the the fact that it's definitely not fall yet at this time. So um, I liked I liked how that worked on this this spread to kind of tie everything together. I'm looking at the stamps now. I know I want to do some stamping on this spread. So I'm just figuring out which stamps I want to put where. I definitely want one on the label that I've put under this photo. And I was thinking about what color ink. So I was going to grab my regular black VersaFine Black Onyx ink. But instead, I decided to grab this Distress Oxide ink in, um, is it Walnut Stain? I will have to verify that and I will definitely link it down below. But um, because there's not really a lot of black on this photo, there's a lot of brown. And brown definitely goes better with this fall warm color tone theme that I have going on. So I decided to grab that ink and that's what I'm going to be using to uh, stamp all of the stamps that I stamp on this spread. Uh, you know, for a long time I, I didn't use brown ink because the inks that I had um, always looked like they kind of... Uh, bled like they were fuzzy around the edges and I hated that look. So even today when I think of stamping in brown ink, I pause because I think, oh, I don't want that fuzzy look on my stamps. But um, it was just the ink I was using, obviously, not the, f the fact that it was brown. So now that I have this brown ink, um, I am really enjoying using it to stamp all of my sentiments. So um, I really am happy with these Distress Oxide inks. I cannot say it enough. It has absolutely changed the way I stamp. All right, so moving on to more stamping here. I'm, I have two stamp sets in my little DIY stash kit. This one is from Citrus Twist. I think it's a Traveler's Notebook stamp set from um, maybe last year uh, or possibly even the year before. And then I also have this one from Studio Calico, which I think might be a Life Love Paper stamp set. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but it is also several years old, but it's very fall themed. Both of them are very fall themed. So that's why they were in the kit with all of the fall things. And I really love these stamp set. I love the leaves on that Studio Calico stamp set. I really want to use it on a Project Live spread. Um, it just didn't work for this one, especially because it isn't actually fall, but I definitely want to use it. I'm hoping that I can use this DIY stash kit again for a future week and um, act that one that is actually in fall. And then I can hopefully do some, some stamping with those leaves then. So I'm just creating little clusters. I'm kind of repeating the same um, 
formula here for my clusters, although I do kind of go off the formula a little bit for this one. So this is a card from, um, it's from Citrus Twist. It was a printable, like an extra card in one of the kits, uh, again, I think maybe last year. Uh, and it says pumpkin spice in my cup. And I have this photo of three fall flavored coffees that I purchased. Actually, one is just the fall um, fall blend from Starbucks that I tend to get every year. It's one of my favorite coffees. I'm actually not a huge Starbucks fan, uh, but every year I get the fall blend and every year I get the holiday blend and I do really like those two. So generally I don't buy Starbucks coffee other than those two, but I was feeling anxious for fall at this time. And when I got the fall blend, I, I had the, um, uh, maple something, and a pumpkin spice, two flavored coffees, which I don't drink very often, but I was feeling all the fall vibes and just wanted to get all the fall things. So I grabbed those two coffees at the same time. And I actually really did enjoy the maple one. I ended up giving the pumpkin spice one away. I'm just not a, not a pumpkin spice fan, but oh well, I tried. Um, okay, so I added a stamp on the label and the little uh, sticker and then I added a chipboard piece with the puffy heart on top of it so not quite the same formula as the other two cards that I did but um, you know generally kind of the same idea and then I repeated the same thing on that top photo which is just of me with my coffee in bed um, it was just a slow morning taking it easy uh, scrunchie was curled up next to me I had my laptop I think I was watching YouTube and drinking my coffee and just enjoying um, some quiet time, which uh, was rare for me at the, at the time that I took that photo. So uh, yeah. Okay, so I need to work on my title card. I need to find some alphas. I purposefully didn't include alphas in these kits so that I would have options and so that my alphas would be in my stash available for me to use on other projects while I was working through all of those kits that I made. So now I'm just looking through my very organized alphas. I'm so happy with how this organization turned out. I can't I can't say that enough. Um, and finding ones that will work. So I, I was thinking something warm. I found these copper glitter alphas from Citrus Twist and thought those would be perfect. I had happened to have two E's left, um, but there are no numbers on this set. And I didn't realize it when I first grabbed them that I was going to have to come up with another solution for adding numbers to my title card, uh, but it ends up working out just fine. I really like the copper uh, addition of the copper on this spread. I like the way it looks. I like the little bit of sparkle that it adds. I decided to kind of sprinkle it around and there were a couple little um, shapes on this on this um, package of alphas. So there was an arrow and a star um, and I'm going to add those in a couple other places just to kind of tie in that copper glitter just so it's not only on the title card. So um, I disappeared for a second. I probably should have cut this out, but I went to find uh, the brand new uh, stamp set from Citrus Twist. Um, this is a number stamp set and I'm so sorry. Again, I can't remember the name of it, but I will definitely link that down below as well. I love this stamp set. There are three different sets of numbers in three different fonts. Um, they are sized perfectly for this sort of thing. Um, they're great for December Daily if you're doing that. They're great for Project Life. I am so glad Trina sent these to me. I'm so excited to keep using them. Um, and I'm going to use uh, one of those to just add the week number, which is 36. And I'm just adding it right below the word week. It's going to overlap the pattern on the card a bit. And I like, I like the way that that looks. And then I'm going to also add a label to the bottom of that card to stamp my date, but I'm just kind of thinking about how I want to do that. Uh, I'm also looking through the stamp sets to see if there's anything else I want to stamp on there. I have this card that's going to end up being just a filler card. I'm just going to create a little cluster on it uh, because I, I didn't really have anything else to put there and I thought maybe there would be a stamp on the stamp set that, um, or on one of the stamp sets that could kind of fill in that middle space, but I already have that filler card at the top with the large phrase on it, so I thought I would rather just have a little cluster of things here and maybe add um, a smaller stamp and a phrase sticker or something like that to kind of fill it out and um, just make it just a fun little cluster of pretty things. That's really all I'm going for here. So I have a tag from that uh, Hustle and Heart kit and a couple labels as well. I'm going to add um, one 
stamp here that says something about family. Um, I don't remember what it says. I don't have it in front of me. I am failing you guys. This, this, this video as far as remembering what things say and what things are called and where they are because I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing a great job. So I apologize again. Um, you'll, you can probably read it. You can probably read it better than I can because it's a tiny little, tiny little square on my screen. Okay, so anyway, I stamped that on one of the labels, added another phrase sticker. I'm going to la layer it with that tag and another label just to create a little cluster. I have a little chipboard heart as well that's going to go on there just to add a little bit of dimension. And then I think I come back in later and um, add a staple into the hole of that tag. I don't generally like leaving tags empty. I, I like to put string or a staple in them just to make it look like um, they're, they're serving a purpose, that they're actually functioning as a tag. Uh, okay, so back to my title card now. I just need to find a label to stamp my dates. Um, I chose this one. It's kind of a green color. I used that same color on, on another spot on the on the layout so I thought it would uh, work nicely here and I'm using my tiny date stamp I really love this date stamp it's so easy to get um, long dates and this is one of those weeks that spans two months so I had a bit more to fit on here and I could do it with this little tiny date stamp so um, I'm just stamping the beginning and ending dates um, just barely fit them on that label and then I'll glue that down and then I think I think that just about does it oh I did consider adding another um, heart, puffy heart, onto the title card. I struggled with that a little bit, trying to figure out how I might be able to fit one on. Eventually, I make it work, and I'm pretty happy with how that looks, and then it just ties in um, that wood grain that is in that little wood veneer house, and also in the small um, label that I put on the, the filler card. And that's going to be it for this spread. That is this one all done. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed seeing my process and I hope you were able to find some inspiration. There are tons of photos coming up so you can see all the little details. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I've done or anything I've used, feel free to leave those in the comments down below and I will definitely get back to you. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, I do appreciate a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe. We'd love to have you. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you back here soon.